everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, Tristan and I are taking you on a tour of our winter wardrobe. Now, the number one question we still get asked to this day is what should you pack? What are the essentials to survive a Canadian winter? Everyone wants to know that, so did we, and there is no perfect answer. I cannot give you just one list of things you have to bring. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you on a tour of our winter wardrobe, um, the things we use from base layers to shoes to outerwear, and then where we got those from too and the brands we actually love and adore. So we're gonna take you on a full tour. Tristan has joined us because so you can get a male and a female perspective, and then hopefully this will help you pack for your upcoming move. So let's see what we've got. The first stop on our tour today is going to be base layers. So Tristan and I use the same brand of base layers. You can get those in Australia, in Canada, um, either or does not matter. So if you've watched my work is working at a ski hill worth it video, you will have seen how much I rave about heat tech. Now this is a brand um, from Uniqlo. Their heat tech ultra warm products are fantastic. So I've had really cheap thermals and I've had really expensive thermals. The ones I had were really uncomfortable, scratchy, and they had seams running straight down the middle of the pant. These ones I find are the most comfortable. Now Tristan and I wear the exact same ones. Now I have these in my tops as well. So they're about $50 a piece in AUD, um, but I love these. They're the most comfortable thing to wear. This top here is also ultra warm. Um, it's the same brand. You can see here the fabric is just really soft and fluffy. Um, I find this super great for snowboarding. This is the heaviest version that they have, um, but I think this is great. You can wear it under anything pretty comfortably. If it's not too cold though and you want something a little bit lighter, they have three different levels of uh, warmth quality. And then I've also got this one. This has a little bit of a lower neck. And one thing I like about this is if I want to wear it under like clothes to go out for dinner or something like that, like you're not going out for an adventurous day in the snow. If so, I would wear my white one. Um, but this one is really nice just for an underneath layer, but it doesn't get in the way neckline wise. A lot of them are built to come really high up and that was something I didn't actually like when you want to just wear them casually. So this one is really good. It's definitely not as thick as the other one, if you can see that there. Um, it is a lot thinner, but it still holds the heat quite well. And then the third one I have is the lightest. Um, so if you can see, you can kind of almost see through it a bit. Yeah, you can see my finger there. Um, so this one is quite light, but this was actually one of my favorites as well. Still kind of that lower neckline. I would always wear a higher uh, neck jumper or fleece. Um, so that would cover that if I was out snowboarding. But this is just so versatile, really easy to chuck on under things and something I would absolutely recommend. If you guys are interested in those and you need a reference, I am 5'9 and I wear a medium in the tops and the bottoms. Um, I definitely have smalls in the bottoms as well. On top of that, another one I have I have this pair of Lorna Jane leggings. Now my mom brought these over for me and they are super thick like thermal uh, material on the inside. So these are really handy if you want something that looks a bit more like exercise-y and casual, um, but still super thick. Next up on base layers is very importantly socks. Um, so we both grabbed a couple of pairs, but I think socks are so important. If you don't have good socks, your feet are just gonna freeze. Um, so something like that's wool or double layered, things like that are really helpful. I've got a few from different brands, but some of them that are my go-tos are these like Cedarberg woolen socks. On top of that, we've also got these like Burton, and if you know snowboarding, Burton's a snowboarding brand, um, these Burton socks as well. I think these are designed to be hiking ones, but I don't like them when they're too high. Um, so I would wear these snowboarding and hiking either or. I, most of my socks for winter are from the brand 32. Again, another snowboarding brand. See, Tristan likes these high ones. Like that's the heel down there. He likes them. I will, I will wear these snowboarding and if we do any winter hikes, otherwise I end up most of the time just wearing my casual day to day socks. socks. Yeah. I still wear like my cheap came up thin socks all around town um but when it is winter and it's really cold and especially if you're out on the snow skiing or snowboarding having good pairs is really worth it um another brand that is really popular in canada is smart wool um we actually don't own any of their socks but yeah good socks are expensive i would come over with just a handful uh at, like at bare minimum um you don't need them for every single day but keep an eye out because if you can get them on special or deals where it's like two for one things like that totally worth it because they are pricey so next up got to keep the hands warm 
We're going to look at gloves. <laughs> um, so there's a few different types you have. I am not a huge fan of like woolly gloves. I find they get kind of dirty um, and like caught on Velcro and things like that really easily. But our kind of basics are just a good pair of liners. Um, these ones are Burton brand again. Um, I don't always web two pairs, but I find liners are really handy for when you're just getting around town. You just need a small pair, put in your pocket, just get the chill off your hands. Get to and from work. And... Yeah, 100%. And then my um, snowboarding gloves are these ones. Now these are mitts, but they still have the finger lines in the middle and I find that kept my fingers so warm. Gore-Tex is really a really good brand to look out for too when you're buying snowboarding gear. It's upside down, sorry. <laughs> um, because this, it's the waterproofing. So it's not gonna make them perfect forever, but it definitely helps. These ones are even broken and I've still used them for a whole season. They're still amazing. But something like this is gonna cost you about 90, 100 bucks, I think. Yeah, so you wanna budget and get a good pair of gloves. Tristan uses which ones? I use 686 at the moment. I've used these ones for, I think the last, Two seasons? Yeah, I think the last yeah. two seasons, and I love them. 686 is a good snowboarding brand too. We don't own anything else by them, but it has a good rep. Lastly, in our basics category is little accessories, uh, like beanies, um, scarves, things like that. Honestly, I came over with three scarves, and I hardly ever use them, because um, I'm more likely to get like a fleece that's going to come up my neck or things like that. But I think having like one, if it's something you would wear at home and you would wear it here, is probably handy to bring. You will accumulate a collection of these. <laughs> we have so many beanies, toques, hats, whatever you want to call them. One, um, of, one of my favorite brands that we've only just sort of found out about are these autumn beanies. Yeah, they're um, sick. I think I've got one. I think you've got one. I've got one or two. Yeah. But they're sold by a shop in town here. If you are coming to Banff, um, there's a shop called Rude Boys or Rude Girls. Um, so they have their own merch by this brand. But my favorite beanie and Tristan's favorite is both by that brand. Um, Helly Hansen is a brand you'll see a lot when you come to Canada as well. Um, they have quite good gear as well. Um, so I got this hat off a friend. It is my thickest and most woolly hat. Um, but otherwise, you just want something that's not scratchy. I bought a few over the past that have been scratchy, but you want something comfy because you will be wearing it literally every day. Something <laughs> comfy and keep the ears warm because yeah. your ears will get very cold. It makes a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to our next section. So when you're coming to a winter that is as cold as it gets here, layering is your best friend. Now, I've shown you base layers. Your mid layers, we don't have a lot of stuff for mid layers. Honestly, our mid layers are normally the clothes we would wear every day, like yeah. a, a general like long sleeve Sweater, shirt. Sweater, hoodie. Yeah, things like that. We don't. There are some kind of nice like mid layer jackets. I do have. I've got this. This is a bit thicker. On the not so cold days, I will. I wear this as an outer layer, but once it starts getting down to that minus True, thirty, this is I will. A I will wear this as a mid layer. I've got another one that's similar. That's not quite as thick. That is a mid layer as well. Yeah, true. And like, actually, I've got some like fleece jumpers from Kathmandu. Kathmandu. Um, and they were really handy. They're not thick, so they slide on easily between like an a thicker outer layer. Um, but yeah, anything that you can kind of put in between. When it's not too cold, you don't need anything super crazy like designed for any particular purpose. Um, but on those really chilly days, it is nice to have something like a little thicker and warmer. And then this with like a puffer jacket over the top would be perfect. We're gonna show you our kind of collection of outerwear jackets. I've always talked about a winter coat, so I'm gonna show you what that actually looks like. So when it comes to a winter coat, I have one. These things are expensive, right? So you wanna invest in one that's gonna be good quality. This is something I would highly recommend getting in Canada. Don't get it in Australia. Things are not designed to be this warm. Um, but this is my one. As you can see, she's toasty. I'm hot already, like, <laughs> and I have nothing on in between. Um, but it is from the North Face. I got this one half price. So this jacket is worth $500. Um, I got it half price because when we worked up at Sunshine Village, we got pro deals, um, which made it a huge difference. But honestly, this jacket is my favorite thing. It, it comes down um, to my knees, which I think is an awesome thing. I would recommend getting something a little longer. Makes a huge difference. Um, the pockets are fleece lined, which I love. And I've got room underneath to fit um, like a few other jumpers if I need to. This is one that I picked up when we first moved to Canada. We did 
five days in Vancouver and I got it within that time there. This one is amazing, it's super warm, waterproof as well, so it works as a rain jacket as well. But I can wear this around in winter if I want to. Um, it's got a heap of like secret pockets that will keep your phone battery from dying quicker. Heli Hansen is a great brand as well. Um, we own Heli Hansen and North Face the most, I think. Yeah. Another one I love and I wear all the time, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see it everywhere, is this jacket from the North Face. Now this actually came, if you can see this extra zip in here, with a very light, like puffer jacket on the inside. Um, so this, I loved it because you could put the like warmer mid layer and this and zip it together to be one or you could separate them. Now I, the mid layer didn't fit me very well, um, so I just used the outer layer here. But this is my rain jacket, this is my windbreaker. I love it, it's a great little light layer to chuck on top, especially if it's snowing, but it's not that cold. Um, rain jackets are really, really handy. But yeah, this one by the North Face, I adore. I use it all the time. Again, we got it on discount. But yeah, we have quite a lot of their products, so I would recommend those. They have worked really well for us. Next up, we are gonna talk about snow gear. Now, biggest question I get is whether to buy it in Australia or to wait and buy it here. And I will tell you time and time again, wait and buy it here. We did the opposite. We made the mistake, we bought it in Oz, we brought it all over. Don't get me wrong, the gear we bought was great. To be fair, we <laughs> bought a lot of our stuff before we knew we were moving here. It was on the cards. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we paid a lot more, right? Because most of most snow gear and boards and things like that are all made in North America. So they're shipping them over and they're covering that cost. Um, so I would wait, buy it here. You can get a lot of secondhand stuff too. Anyway, that's enough of that. We're going to start with like bottoms or bibs. If you've never heard the word bib before, like I hadn't, I imagine like a bib a baby would wear. Uh, but a bib is basically like your snow overalls. I have a bib. Tristan has two pairs of pants. Um, I prefer the bib because if you fall and your jacket comes up, no snow is getting down your pants, right? You were looking at getting one for that reason. Wait. There is a trick, you just don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> True. So I've only ever had one pair of bottoms, bib, whatever you want to call it. Um, mine is the Vulcan brand. What I love about this, I got it secondhand off a friend. Um, it fits me really well, the space to fit, you know, one or two pairs of pants underneath, one, two or three tops on. The straps are stretchy. Now this is something that's really handy with a bib because if you sit down and you don't have enough like give, it just gives you a wedgie instantly. Um, I really love Burton as a brand and I've tried on their bibs, but I can't find one that works for me yet with them. Their medium's too small, their large is too big. Um, so I'm hoping they bring out some new ones next season I can try on because as much as I love this one She is coming to the end of her life. Look at the butt. It's so worn <laughs> um, But yeah, a good thing about this too. It has lots of little pockets in the legs Pocket up the top that you can like store your stuff in. Um, it also has the Reco Reco mm. technology um, and it is Gore-Tex um, so there's Love the Vulcan ones, um, and I will be getting a new one this season. I just don't know what brand it'll be yet, but this has worked really well for me. Which ones do you have? So I've got, this is my first pair that I got back in Oz. These are, what's the brand? E Eco Light. Yeah, Eco Light. These are, these are actually really good. They're super thick, but very light. So they do keep you very warm. Um, both my snow pants, I will, I'll only wear, at the most, thermals underneath. And then I also have these ones here, which are 32 again. Um, these ones are a lot thinner than the other ones, but these are super comfy. Now, I have only ever had one jacket. I am such a tight ass when it comes to buying new gear because it's so expensive. But I have this Burton jacket, and Tristan got it for me as a gift before we left Australia. And it is the best thing. Like, no joke, the quality on this product. So what, we've used it for like two seasons and then like a couple of days back in the Australian season as well. Um, it is phenomenal. You can see it's got like some fleece layer around the top. It is really comfy on the inside. You want it to be kind of big. You want it to be oversized enough that you can fit your layers underneath and everything you need. You don't want to be restricted, especially while 
out on the snow. Um, but yeah, this Burton one, I love it. I would like to get another one and one that's a bit lighter for spring skiing, but that is a future problem. You would guess it. I've got <laughs> another 32. <laughs> this one is out of, I've got three jackets. This is my thickest one. Um, this is one we got back in Australia yes. as well, um, but the brand is here too. Oh, actually, something to look for. If you're buying a jacket, get one with this little arm pocket zip. If you're at a resort that has an RFID card, you put it in your thing and then it just scans automatically. This little thing is so handy. Get one with an arm zip. Yeah, this, this one, again, is like super warm. I didn't wear it a lot this last season, but... I do, I do love this one. That'd plenty be a of, good all-rounder. Yeah, yeah, plenty of storage pockets and all that good stuff. <laughs> I've got this one from Volcom. This is, this one's a shell. Yes. It's, it's quite a thick shell compared it's, to others that I've... It's not really insulated though. And then come spring skiing time, I'm usually in like an actual hoodie or occasionally a t-shirt. <laughs> Another quick little accessory is a buff. This one's very thin. You can get That's a super thin one. Yeah, you can yeah. get thin, you can get thick, but it'll keep your face and neck protected from the cold winter elements. Personally, this one is more of like a sleeve, so it just goes over like your face and the back of the head. Um, I like the overhead ones. So you put it on like a hat, it comes like down all the way over the back of your neck, the front, um, and then you just kind of have this face circle that's showing, and then you can pull it up so it's just your eyes too. We know people, we've seen people that have gotten frostbite on their faces um, because it gets cold. A buff is essential. Even if it is not that cold, um, by the time you're going down the hill at a speed and you've got wind hitting your face, it hurts. It's not good for your skin. Um, so yeah, a buff or balaclava, are absolutely essential. All right, next up, we're going to talk to you guys about shoes. Now we don't have the best selection, so but we've been living here two years and we've gotten gotten away with it. Um, do you want to show them what you've got? I have. This is my only pair of. <laughs> they're not even I snow guess, shoes. Well, they're not, <laughs> but they're great for winter. Um, it's just a pair of. <laughs> Just a pair of black Timberlands. Um, they're great because I can walk to work in them in the winter, but also wear them while working. They're comfy. They're not like they do somewhat keep your feet warm. Obviously, yeah. the correct socks are needed as well, but it's not like they're you know letting all the air through. Yeah, and... never been cool. Uh, my pair of winter boots. Again, if you've watched that, uh, it's, com it's coming to a ski season worth it video you will see that I have terrible winter boots. So I'm gonna show you two pairs. The first one are these ones. Now these are actually really good. And I are got they from these, Kmart? they're from Aldi. Oh. So if you're from Australia, you know Aldi have these snow deals and I cannot say that I have tried any of their other products, but these snow boots literally cost me $30. Um, I got them from Aldi, which if you're not from Australia, is like just a discount grocery store that has weird specials. <laughs> um, but they're great. Like the, they just zip up, but in here the, um, is enclosed anyway. They have uh, warm casing. Don't get me wrong. They are not the perfect boot. The insole does not really stay in properly. Um, they could definitely do with something better. But for when I needed them, they were great. The only times I would really wear them is if we had like a really heavy snow day or if we needed, um, if I wanted snow boots to walk to work. And then when I got to work, I would swap into like a different shoe. So I would do that a lot when I was working at the ski hill because I worked indoors. Um, but yeah, these were really handy. I just saw a little label called Tentex. I don't know if that's a brand you can look up or not. Um, but that was my kind of go-to. Thing I don't like about these though is if you're going out for a night, they don't look good. So I have these ones as well. They are so slippery and they are terrible winter boots. <laughs> I love these shoes, um, but I'm gonna get something new this winter. The bottom just freezes, it is so slippery, um, but the high top is really good. So something with a high top and that has some good tread on it and you will be absolutely fine. Now, as a final little segment for you guys, we're gonna show you what snowboarding gear we actually have in case that is of interest to you. Um, so following on from our shoe comment, these are our snowboarding boots. So these are my boots. They are Nidecker and they are the Luna boot. Um, one thing I love about these, they've got the double boa system. The best thing about that is it pulls your heel in and it locks it in. Now, if you go to buy boots, whoever is helping you will explain all of this. I've got 
set of Burton photons. Super comfy boot. They've worked well for us. Tristan's had two pairs of boots over the years. He's had laces as well. I do prefer laces. You've got a bit more control. Oh. One good pair of boots is all you need. It is the only thing I would absolutely recommend buying brand new. If you saw in that other video, my friend Sam is a snowboard instructor. She's been working in ski hills for the last 14, 14 seasons. Um, and that is the one thing she said, have your own pair of boots, buy them brand new. It is gonna ruin your day if you have terrible ones. Um, so definitely purchase some of those. This, Spend the money. It's worth it. Most importantly, we have boards. Now, our boards don't have the bindings on them right now because they are packed up because it is summer here. <laughs> um, but I've got this Nitro Fate board. I also had a GNU Ladies Choice board. Um, I loved both of them. I just got this one um, to upgrade size wide, size wise. Um, so I ride a 153, um, that worked well for me. I did have a 148 and a half on the GNU board when I was learning. So those are my two, I don't know much about boards. Um, but I love this one and it works. I've got two, my Jones Frontier for like more backcountry powder riding. This one here is one that I picked up this season. This one is a public. I got this one for riding park. Now our bindings are missing off them. So we'll show you them separately. So these are my bindings. I have the Now brand. I got these back in Oz. They've worked well for me. I've had no issues with them. These ones I got back in Oz. They The brand is Flux. Flux It or Flux. Um, really like these. And then I also have the Salomon District, which I just got with my other board as well. Now that is all of our winter gear. The only other things you would need would be like a helmet for snowboarding, goggles, a couple of little things like that. But I hope that has been helpful for you guys to kind of see a little bit more of what we wear during winter, whether we're out on the snow or just getting around town. If you have any specific questions about brands, gear, whether it's worth bringing a specific something that is important to you, pop it in the comments. I would love to chat. If you're curious, we also have another video on our channel called Winter Packing List. Filmed that quite a while ago, so you can check that one out as well. Um, and then some of our Q&As and our ski season, uh, is it worth it video, all have tips in there as well. Feel free to check them out. I hope it's been helpful and I wish you all the best for your upcoming move. But I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.